Hello, everybody. This is Rail Splitters on the Mic. I'm Rusty Peace, and we're talking today with Lincoln Memorial University head golf coach Travis Muncie. Coach, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here, Rusty. It is the final day of March 2020. We're in the LMU golf facility today, and this is a, a building that is normally bustling with, with life and with movement and with uh, purpose today. We're the only two souls in the building, and uh, COVID-19 is the reason for that. It's something that has, uh, is unprecedented and has really kind of set people back in every category of athletics and in life like we've never seen before. Yeah, uh, you know, it's very weird. I, I don't think I've ever had a weekend in March where I wasn't doing something for a long, long time. But, you know, if – if all this hadn't happened, we would be down at the Tennessee River Rumble right now, hopefully winning our fourth straight tournament there. So, you know, it, it, it is eerie and odd that, you know, that we are the only ones here. The kids are gone. Uh, life is almost shut down for now. Uh, everybody's quarantined or, or locked up, self-isolating, you know, but it's things we have to do. This decision came down from the NCAA a couple of weeks ago to not only cancel March Madness, but the entire spring sports schedule. Most schools throughout the country, if not all, have have uh, terminated on-campus classes. They've gone to online classes. Uh, for you and your program, while this was a uh, a reloading year, we'll call it for the for the women's program, so to speak. The men were in a unique position in that. Uh, they were poised to to possibly make a third appearance, a third consecutive appearance in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, we had moved up to six in the country, and you know we're, we're starting to get momentum again uh, from the fall, and everybody's starting to play good. And uh, you know we're fairly a young team on the men's side too. You know we're not. We have one senior on the starting five right now. We've been rotating in and out. We've had some injuries. We've had some academic problems and you know uh, but for the most part we've played very solid this spring and you know we've moved right up and I feel like we were going to make that push again you know we were almost definitely going to make it to regionals without a problem we were third in the region so you know it wasn't like the region was out of us we didn't have to win conference to make it to postseason when the NCAA announced the decision to cancel spring sports, did you have the opportunity to address your team? You know, it all happened so fast. I mean, it was very fast. Where uh, the the NCAA made the thing, uh, the announcement, our school made an announcement, and then it was like nobody could be together. We had to sort of just all disband. We couldn't have a team, a full team meeting. So I had to meet with players individually before they left or went about because they wanted people to go home if they could you know for the internationals it, you know it's not like you could jump in your car and go home but you know a lot of the locals and everything you know they want everybody to try to go home if possible so in, in talking with those players that you have on the men's and women's programs uh, what's the general feeling that you've gotten from them on on this whole occurrence sadness you know if i wanted to to sum it all up in one word it, it was sadness uh because, you know, you had seniors, you had, uh, you know, people that have put so much time and effort into their sport and program and teammates, you know, to just to be stopped right there. It, sadness. The, the ability to sustain the level of play that this team has for multiple years in a row is incredibly difficult in any sport. When – we started talking prior to going on camera today. You were talking about this team's youth, and, and you just mentioned that a minute ago, and the fact that you're really in a in a very good position if you don't bring anybody in for next year. That that's true. I mean, we we've, we've got a lot of talent on this team, which we have secured a couple guys early. Uh, we're talking to a couple of JUCO guys right now that could be game changers. Uh, but, you know, it's very difficult because you, nobody can come to campus. You can't go see them. Nobody's playing. Most of these country, they close their golf courses and things like that. So, I mean, basically sports have shut down probably to August. So, in the big picture, we have to assume, as I see it, that this too shall pass and eventually life will 
or so we hope, will go back to normal. Mm -hmm. In many sports, when student athletes don't compete in a fiscal year or in a season, uh, it takes them a while to get back to their to their level of play that they had before that took place. Is golf the same way? It is, but <laughs> it, it's funny you say that because I've been getting these Instagram and uh, Snapchats and things from players where they've makeshifted nets up in their backyard because uh, and a lot of, all of my kids are from the UK, which they have shut down everything. And... Uh, They've got their backyards, they've got nets put up back there and <laughs> blankets over clotheslines to, to make shift where they can hit balls. So, you know, no matter the circumstances, these kids are going to find a way to keep playing and keep practicing. So much of today, uh, whether it be social media, whether it be through television or radio or billboard, newspaper, magazine, et cetera, is about branding. The men's and women's golf programs with the success that the, the two have enjoyed in recent years have been branded very well. Uh, they have become uh, a very popular name in terms of uh, collegiate potential student athlete, collegiate athletes. Does this do something to potentially hurt the programs in some way or potentially hurt recruiting for the future? I, I do not. I think our athletic department you know, you know, besides golf, is strong. I think we're all going to come back stronger, harder, and ever next year. The want and will is going to succeed all this bad stuff going on. I feel like these kids are, are going to bounce right back, and we're going to push for where we, we're going to pick up where we left off, and we're going to push forward to win conference champions, to win regional championships, to win national championships. So I don't really feel like it's going to hinder us a bit. It may slow us down, but, you know, we're going to pick, it, pick the torch up and keep moving. Spoke with Mark Walters, the uh, men's and women's tennis coach, uh, yesterday in regard to uh, this situation. And uh, Lincoln Memorial has made the decision to go to online classes for the rest of the spring semester 2020. For men's and women's golf, it's very similar to men's and women's tennis. You don't really worry too much about the academic side because they're very good student athletes. However, there are some student athletes or students in general that have never taken an online class. Does that concern you at all that potentially you might have uh, some fallout due to academics? Yes. You know, when we first were being aware that we're going all online, we had to put some academic protocols into place to watch these people uh, and kids to make sure, you know, they're good students, but it's pretty easy to procrastinate you know, put something off, something gets behind, miss a deadline. And when you miss a deadline with these online classes, you know, it just happens and, you know, you can't get it back. So we put some pretty good protocols in place to help people from not uh, uh, to do things. So what's been the biggest adjustment for you with this whole situation, other than the obvious, with no student athletes on campus, uh, not a great deal to do in terms of the season that was at hand before the decision by the NCAA. You know, it gives us some time to, to go back and, and start working. You know, basically we started working on next year, you know, finish up recruiting. You know, we're working on 21 kids, uh, start doing uniforms, budgeting, you know, all the fun stuff that, you know, that uh, comes with, you know, being a college coach and, you know, we just already picking the pieces up and, and looking for the the twenty the twenty twenty one season. Even here in a remote or rural area like uh, Claiborne County, Tennessee, we've not been immune to the virus coming to this county. I think that last we uh, we saw that there were two confirmed cases here within the county. I know that uh, my wife, being in the medical field, has said that there are other cases that are having to be reviewed a little more closely to see if, in fact, there may be more than the, just those two. For you and your family, have there been any adjustments that you've made uh, above and beyond what is being urged by the governor and other? You folks? know, I'm very precautious of what I do. I, I help take care of my mother. You know, she's one of the uh, the age risk uh, candidates for the disease or for the virus. So, you know, I've really had to watch, especially washing our hands, our clothes. I change and take a shower before I go over there to take her her groceries and things like that. It's you know. I was a germaphobe before, but now I'm like full-blown germaphobe. But, you know, it's just precautions you got to take. 
you know, for my kids because they're not going out into it. So if anything comes in, it's on me. So I've taken those extra precautions when I do come out, but I'm doing what they're saying. I work a lot from home, but I do have to come out for groceries and medical supplies and different things like that. It's interesting that you say that many of the golf courses throughout the country have shut down because the new term that has come out of this whole pandemic has been social distancing. Mm -hmm. Uh, When you're talking about golf, other than potentially going into the clubhouse or having to pay to come in and so forth, uh, you're out with a a group, usually no more than four. Mm -hmm. And, and you're, you're never really in contact with the same things very often that those other three individuals are, uh, you're teeing up your own ball, you, you got your own bag, you got your own clubs, et cetera. So it almost seems like golf would be something that would help you pass the time of social distancing. It, it is, you know, and, you know, the golf course has done some fantastic things. You know, they've closed the clubhouses down. So, you know, a lot of things were done online to do that. The only thing is, you know, riding in a cart with somebody. So a lot of golf courses have put the protocol in one person per car. But if you walk, it's even better because, you know, you're outside, you know, you're, within never within six feet of somebody really when you're playing anyway so it is one of those uh great sports you could do to social distance you know and they've raised the cups up out of the ground or replaced them with foam so if you hit that you know it counts as, as hole in the putt so you know it's it's good to be outside because I, I they don't know all about the, the virus but they said heat and the warm weather is good to fight it so you know the more you can be outside and not stuck inside i think the better off we'll be prior to this interview you and i briefly discussed the uh, possibility of the ncaa granting a fifth year for seniors for spring sport athletes i think if i saw that correctly yesterday that was voted upon by the ncaa and has for the most part passed uh, give us your take on that, if you will, before we close things out. You know, it's it's a double-edged sword with this. You know, I feel so sorry for my seniors. And, you know, if they give their year back, I think that's a great, you know, giving everybody that year back, you know, I think that opens Pandora's box on a lot of issues uh, on eligibility, transfers. I mean, I think this that's something that, you know, really has to be looked at by the NCAA. And, you know, as much as we – this – basically it sucks that this has happened, you know, we got to move on and, you know, life has got to go on. So, but even though they give this year back to these kids, a lot of these kids won't come back. You know, you take, play one of my players, for example, from the UK, you got to get home. They've been home for five or six months. They've got back into a routine, you know, for them to come back. And, you know, it's just a grind for these kids when they come back, you know, academically, athletically, the travel, you know, it is a grind. And, you know, sometimes it's, you know, for them to come back and do it for one more year after you've done graduated, it may be a hard decision. As I said to Coach Walters yesterday, very bizarre times we live in today, some things that we've never seen before, no playbook to really go by uh, when having to deal with this. Coach, I'm going to give you the opportunity that uh, I, I failed to give Coach Walters yesterday. Uh, you're, you're in front of your uh, student athletes as a whole for the first time on camera here today. Anything that you would like to pass along to them before next fall semester? You know, we, we, miss, we miss everybody. I miss all the players. I miss, you know, the coming through, the daily interactions with, with my kids. So we miss you. We wish you back. We hope you get back here soon in August. And uh, if you need us, we're here, always here for you. 